please take, take it, it away. away. Hello, good morning again. So I'm so glad to be here and uh, hold on. Hello, good morning once again. Um, so glad to be here and I'm going to do my best to explain these concepts to the best of my knowledge. I do have two labs, I uh, sorry, three labs <clears throat> that I'm going to do. The purpose of this lab is not for you to be technical, okay? Most of the job roles that Mercy talked about, they're all going to be more of theory. So uh, it come with um, you applying your wisdom and, uh, and learning, you know. Um, but for what we do, uh, I'm a technical person. Most of the time, you'll be surprised that the people that are non-technical makes a lot more money than the people that are technical. Yeah, but that's not to say that we do more work. Believe me, it's, the stress level is all the same. Because if we don't know something, the stress is the same. <laughs> so... Um, I'm going to encourage all of you to uh, um, take this seriously and uh, I'm going to show you um, three different attacks um, that's going to motivate you to um, to take security, I mean to think security in a different angle or whatever you're learning, you can be sure that you can make impact. You know, for example, if you're in an organization, you, when you're telling them I'm yes. so sorry, I made, I made you the host. host. I, don't I don't think, think we can, can have, have two hosts. hosts. Can, can you record, record this session? Please? Yes, I'm going to record Thank it. You. Okay, let me hit record. So I'm going to record to cloud, right? Or to my computer? Which one you want? You can you record, record it to the, the cloud, cloud and then I can pull, pull it. it. Okay. Recording, Recording in progress. progress. Okay. So as I was saying, the purpose of the the demonstrations that we're going to do, usually Mercy wants me to do demonstrations, especially because it enhances your understanding. So I'm going to do the demonstrations. You're going to observe them and say, oh, so if I don't protect myself, this is what somebody's going to be seeing. This is what somebody's going to be noticing. So they can see my password and actually they can shut my computer down. So this will actually trigger some alerts and help you that as you study further into the security field, you'll be able to um, uh, make some good recommendations and argue about some protocols and why this is outdated and why this needs to be updated. So that is why I'm going to do So when I'm doing the labs, don't worry about all the technicalities that I'm doing. Just be interested in the results. Okay. So we're going to begin with introduction to computer networking. So basically this course is fundamentally talking about how computers work. You know, it's not going to teach you how to fix computers, but this is going to tell you how the computers work, especially in a network environment. And the computers that are alone, what are the components? How are they made up of? You know, and this is what this is going to be about. And some basic security you know, and then Wi-Fi technologies. So this is what this is going to be about. So. Okay, perfect. So what is computers? Or what are computers? Um, basically, the understanding of computers is that we know that it's something that is made up of what? Hardware and software, you know, that can exist in what? Variety of sizes, you know, that's why we have microcomputers, we have mini computers, we have what? Um, all kinds of different sizes, you know, and uh, mainframe, that's, I think, growing up, you know, these are very old technologies. Sorry. Some of them are in big organizations, bank and institutions, government. So depending on the organization, depending on the, um, the institution. So that determines what type of computer could be able to handle the workload. So this is made based on the kind of workload that these things does. You know, what do they do? You know, because if you use your personal computer in an institution like a school, you know, to process students' data that is about thousand plus, can you imagine how can your computer even handle it? It's going to be like the traffic is going to be, it's going to crash. 
So this is why that we have these varieties so that something is designed specifically to perform what or to handle a specific purpose or task, you know. Yeah, you, you, the people always say you cannot use a knife to go for what? A gunfight. I think now that will make you understand it perfectly. Okay, so um, so the computers are made of what? Hardware and a software. Now, what are hardware? Hardware generally are the things or the physical components that you can touch, like the keyboard, like the mouse, like any part, the monitor, anything that you can touch, you know. And even when you open into the system unit, like, the things you can touch include what the RAM, you know, the central processing unit, you know, the board, anything at all you can touch is a hardware. Then, just like even the human body. So, come to think about it, we can touch our hands, our legs, our feet, anywhere we can touch is our hardware. But can we touch our thoughts, our thinking, you know, our the way our mind processes things? Can we touch that? So, anything we cannot touch, that is the software. Of the computer so software could be what the operating system that like make the hardware run basically you know it could be what the excel sheet that you are using to type it could be the what the browser anything at all that you can use to write or do internally like that you cannot touch it's called the what the software so basically but softwares are defined as what instructions that makes the computer work okay good any questions so far? I can't hear anybody. Prof, I'm asking that if anyone has a question, please drop it in the chat. And once Prof is paused, we can read out the questions and he will answer it. Oh, okay. Um, like yes, yeah, so I think that's the best thing. That's I think okay. great, Macy. Because else is going to be interrupting the lesson. Okay, perfect. Right. Okay, okay, makes sense. All right. So the next thing that we're going to look at is hang on, computer system. So we have what the computer system, as I explained to you earlier, it have what the hardware, it have the software. And then they have what called the component of the library, which people refer to what the user. Remember, the computer cannot exist on its own; it cannot work. Okay, now we cannot say that. Today, today's technology has evolved to the point that now we have what we call the artificial intelligence (AI). You might have heard of that. So these are computers that function by themselves. Okay, but these are like kind of like automated or programmed in a way that they can function the moment they are deployed they can just function by themselves forever but this library component is talking about the user or the human factor that that adds to the computer or the using of the computer you know because it's the human being anyway that have to build the system is the human being that have to enter the commands so the human factor is the live world Okay, so like I was explaining to you, the hardware component, you can see speakers, monitors, CD-ROM, um, system unit printers, then we have what, the flash drive, like memory card reader, all the different components that you can touch. Just understand it like that. Anything you can touch, I mean, look at yourself. Can I touch my hand? Can I touch my leg? Can I touch anywhere you can touch? It's a hardware. Think of it like that. So the same to the computer. Then we have the computer hardware architecture so usually the most important thing is the components that are listed the designing is also important i see it like this it's called the information processing cycle you know how data is received you know and how they are what processed in the system and what is used to display the results so looking at the hardware structure based on the picture that you can see you can see that we have keyboard mouse and then other ip devices and whatever it, whatever it is these things are what accept the data you know keyboard you use it to input the data okay now that brings us to what we call the what 
the input devices. So keyboard, mouse, and any other device that you can use to add, capture information onto the computer. These are all called input devices. Now let's go to the middle row. Now we have the processing devices and storage. Processing and what? Storage devices. The devices in the middle, in the cycle, they are the what? The processing devices. So CPU is what processes data. It processes data. How does it do that? There is an arithmetic part, which is the addition, the subtraction, the multiplication. And then we have what? The logical aspect, which is like what? The greater than, less than, the sorting. This is how computers think. Arithmetic function and what? Logic function. Arithmetic is the additions and subtractions. Then the logic is the what? The categorizations and the what? The greater than, the less than function. The reasoning aspect. Then we also have storage. We have types of storage. Temporary storage or primary storage. And we have what? Permanent storage or secondary storage. Okay. Now, storage in general is like, um, when we say temporary storage, for example, something that can hold something in a short while. Like when you turn on your computer and open a Word document, let's say by mistake, the computer let, lights went out and it says in Ghana, you have a doom sock and then the computer went off. Then when you turn the computer back on, you realize that the Word document that you had open had gone. So this is to tell you that um, the device that was responsible or the component that was responsible for holding that data temporary is the RAM that is in the computer. That's a temporal. Okay. Like the same as a CD. When you're playing, like, like the CD ROM, the one that plays the, and then, you know, it plays and read the thing. It just read it for you. It can't hold that information. Once you take the CD out, that information can't be read anymore. So these are what we call temporary or primary storage devices. That means they hold information for a short while. Then we have permanent storage. Permanent storage are things that hold information for what? A long time. Hard drive, your HDD. HDD stands for what? Hard drive. RAM stands for random access memory. CPU stands for central processing unit. Please, if there is any acronym that you, that you don't understand, please note it. And then remember, try to, these things are very, very basic, but they're important. BIO stands for Basic Input Output System, okay? So in the middle category, as I said, these are the processing and storage. Now, the last part on the right is what we call the output. These are the things that displays the information for you, okay? For example, monitor, it helps you to see the data you are typing in, okay? If it's a movie, it helps you, it's read the CD and help you see it. So that's the monitor function. The printer prints out what? The data in a hard copy. Okay. And then the speaker, it output what? The sound so they can hear. So these are what? The, the different aspects. So in this picture, in general, we have what we call the information processing cycle. How data is captured into the system and how the data is what? Processed and, and stored and then how the data is what? Outputted. So this is what this picture in general is describing. Now, the next part, we have this computer software. So as I was explaining, the software aspect of the computer talks about the things that you cannot touch, okay? non-tangible or intangible that's what they call it you cannot touch it it's like it's just like your thoughts think of it like what your thoughts okay so in the computer the things that make the computer run it's not just the physical box that you see there are some commands and uh, instructions that had been carefully written by a programmer the person who write the softwares are called programmers so they carefully write them to make the system come to life, okay? It's just like, like our soul inside our body, something that we cannot touch, you know? 
but it's what keep our bodies up, you know, and running. And when the soul is not in the body, the body, the body is just there, wasted and dead. Okay. So then we have these type of software systems. We have the operating system. The operating system is the major one. But before that, let me tell you, the BIOS is actually the major one because every system without the BIOS, you can't even install the operating system. Okay. Without the BIOS, you can't even install the operating system. So the BIOS is like it's what inspect. For example, when you just turn on the computer, that is what inspect and say, oh, he has a mouse connected. Oh, he has a keyboard connected. Oh, he has that connected. And if you don't have any of these things connected, it's going to detect this. Oh, he doesn't have that. Mouse is not connected. Keyboard is not connected. You know, but today it's hard to see that because of the laptops that we deal with all the time. But those of you who had computers that were Pentiums and uh, or just separate desktop, if you unplug the, 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 the keyboard or the mouse and then you turn on the computer, the BIOS will detect, oh, there's no keyboard connected. So this is what the BIOS does. When you just turn on the computer, it inspects the configurations and say, okay, this is there, this is there, this is there, so now we can go on. And now, if you don't have an operating system, it's going to tell you that, oh, the operating system is not installed. So all of this is the function of the BIOS. Now you install the operating system. Operating systems are like the uh, Windows 7, Windows XP, you know, let me okay, accept this person. Windows 7, Windows XP, Windows 10, and now we have Windows 11. And then we can also, on the, those of you who are using the Mac, the operating systems are the what the the Catalina the 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 the, the Sierra the you know the high yeah it was a high Sierra one like, like all of that that's the operating system in the Mac environment but in the Microsoft environment that is the Windows Seven Windows XP and all those other types so these are the operating systems now we have device drivers device drivers is like kind of like a mediator. You know, mediators is like something that allows, like, who understands two people. Let's say, let me put it in this context. So, for example, let's say myself and maybe maybe Mercy, we are not in good terms. And then Miss Ajua, AJ, want to come and intervene and then help us resolve the issue so that we can come to a better understanding. This is the function of drivers. That's what drivers does. For example, you buy a new printer. And now, and put the printer on the computer. The printer doesn't automatically work. Unless these days, now they have automated the processes. Before, when you connect the printer to the computer, you cannot just print like that. It, unless you bring the mediator to come and tell them, okay, now there's a, there's a printer there, and there's you there. You guys need to talk to each other, and then the printer can work. This is how drivers work under every circumstance. So understand that. Before your camera, external camera, not the one that is built in, the external one, before it can function, they have to be a driver, okay? If, if you have a scanner, then you scan pictures into the computer. Understand that before the scanner can scan properly, they have to be a mediator. And the mediator is who? The driver, the device driver. Now, talking about assemblers and compilers and loaders, all of these three are in the programming world for the most part. Okay, these are in the what programming world. Um, I remember when I was taking um programming uh C plus plus. If we write a program, um, the assembler is kind of like a fundamental part that allows the comp the compiler, which like I put the things together and say that okay, now your program is ready to uh, to work. You know, and then so these three aspects, these things are operates in the what the programming world. Okay, like this kind of like the fundamentals for people to design softwares. So think of it like that. These are the fundamentals in the programming world to allow people to design and develop the softwares that we use, like softwares like the Word, the Excel and stuff. So think of it like that. Okay, now we have the application software. Application software, these are like, okay, so application software, we call them like the software that are designed to pe perform what? A specific task. Software is designed to what? Perform what? A specific task. 
What does that mean? Word is for what? Just writing documents and processing the document, you know, and formatting it and printing it. That's the word for. Excel, what do we use for? Mostly in accounting, they use it to do their maths, like, like do balance sheet and all kinds of things. Okay. Then we have the multimedia softwares. You know, people in the media world, you know, they use all kind of creative applications to like, compile videos and do all kinds of stuff. You know, then we have enterprise. So look at it like these days, what softwares can we think of as application softwares? For example, I could, I could just, um, let me see. What is the easiest example that I can give? Um, what software did any of you buy recently? And what was it for? Think of it like that. Recently, did I buy any software? Or maybe even it's with a CD or, or it's just something that you downloaded free on the internet. Think of it like recently, have any of you downloaded any software? And uh, have you bought or purchased any software? What was it for? Whatever you bought, it was an application software because it was for you to do a specific task. Okay. Now, network essentials. <clears throat> okay. Does anybody have any questions about software or application? All right. All right. But so did your question about bias get answered? I put it in the chat too. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So now we're going to explain the fundamentals of network communications. Now, just understand the computer that you have in your house, the moment you disconnect that computer from the internet, let's say you turn off the Wi-Fi, that time that computer is disconnected from the world. So in that case, that computer is what we call a standalone computer stand alone computer that means that it's by itself it's not joined to any network now when we say a network in general what does that mean even in the human sense it's as a result of networking that myself and mercy got to be friends it's as a result of networking that i get to meet all of you today so networking in general sense is like connecting with people you know and building up like so that when you need something at some point you can just reach out to them because it's as a good mercy is a great network person not just even a cyber security analyst she's a great network resource person think of her strategies you can see a whole network in her she have all the people around her in, in a way that if she needed help at any point in time she could just reach out and reach out and reach out now this is the same concept that has been transferred over to networking in the computer industry or in the computer world. Now, imagine a human being that is not connected with people. He's alone and mostly he doesn't get a lot done because he doesn't know the right people to contact. So your computer, when you disconnect it from the internet, that is how you made your computer to be like at that instant, a standalone person. Now, when the moment you connect your computer to the Wi-Fi, that means that you are giving your computer a chance to interact with any other device that is in your house. Because if you turn on your Wi-Fi, remember, it's not only your computer that is connected to your house Wi-Fi. What else is connected? Your phone is connected. These days, your TV is connected. Even your fridge is connected. Now you're giving your computer a chance to talk with all the neighbors in the house. So the computers also have neighbors. So think of it like that. Okay? So networking in the general sense, that is what networking actually means. It's nothing complicated. Please, it's nothing complicated than this. Think of you putting your computer to be in, a, in an environment of with other computers such that they can talk and, and have a conversation, just like we are having a conversation. 
That's what that means. That's what all of that means. Now, bad people now want to take advantage of that. And that's where you come in to learn. I understand what the networking mean. How the, the computers, because we human beings, we understand our interactions. And if somebody was to come to you with a BS, you will know already. And you can catch it. Now, you need to learn how the computers also interact. So that if another computer was to come with a BS, you can detect it automatically and then make so recommendations and suggestions so that it doesn't happen. That's why you are here today. So understanding networking is the, is the first and most important thing for you to be able to be successful in this industry. Not necessarily because we, you know, we of course, we have shortcuts. But in order to even understand the shortcuts, you need to understand some basic things. Okay. Let's go. Okay. So define common networking terms. So we're going to look at some networking terms. Okay, so this is what the objectives for explain the fundamental of network communications, define common networking terms, then compare different network models. So we're gonna look into that. So these are examples of what? Computer networks. So we do have the what? The computer hooked switch to switch. Okay, this, I don't even want to bring that. I don't want to even bring a switch yet because that's going to start causing trouble and chaos. We don't want that. So as I explain, when you connect your computer, like I think the easiest way I can explain networking to you is using your house Wi-Fi because now all of us have Wi-Fi in our houses. And now we all know how to connect, the, at least, at least the most important, we even know how to connect our phones to the, to the, to the Wi-Fi. So network could be formed. So how the way I'm going to approach this is network could be formed in two ways. Either with the cables, whether you use the what the, the, the connect a cord to your computer and maybe connect it to another device in your computer that will support you to connect with other devices. That's how I'm going to put it for now. Or you can what use your Wi-Fi and then connect to what the other devices. So this is how, like the, the the ways that in which you can set up what a network, but don't this is not the only way. Remember before we used to have what we call Bluetooth, right? Where you used to what pair with somebody and and share music with them. You were networking, but you just didn't know it was a networking. That was networking you were doing. You used to what you were doing was what we actually called peer to peer network you were actually sharing something with another person's phone alone. Two people sh pairing each other and sharing a music or a photo. You were actually doing what we call a peer-to-peer -peer network. It's a type of network connection. That is actually what you are seeing where you see the cord connected to the computer. That's what we call a peer-to-peer -peer network in this instance. Just one computer to another computer. That is a peer-to-peer -peer network. So don't, don't eliminate the idea of Bluetooth because you need the idea of the Bluetooth to understand further into networking. So you can see that network has what? Evolved from the infrared. Actually, it began from what? Infrared, you know, then to Bluetooth. And now we have what? This wide range wireless network connectivities to the, for, for the cell phones that allow the cell phones to work and then allow what the laptops and all of that to work please if you have any question put it in the comment and we can able to um um help you with that so now let's talk about this device called computers hooked to a switch these are common things that you're going to be hearing a lot a switch is nothing more than a device that have a lot of ports that will allow you to connect multiple computers to what to it easy as that for example, you need something to expand, right? For example, let's say let's say we did not have, um, let's say we did not have Wi-Fi today, okay? But then you have your fridge you want to connect to the internet. Not, 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 let me not just say to that. Okay, let me say to the internet for now because that's gonna help. You want your fridge to connect to the internet. You want your TV to connect to the internet. You want your um, laptop to connect to the internet. How are you going to do that? Imagine we didn't have Wi-Fi. So that is where switches came in. 
they were the ones that were helping you connect your fridges, your your TVs, your laptops, and your phones all together to the internet at that time when we didn't have Wi-Fi. Think of it like that. So switch is nothing more than what? A device that will expand the connection. I hope that makes sense. That is a switch. It, now they come in, in forms and shapes and sizes. Now that is a different thing. But the basic understanding is this thing is what ex help you what expand the connection. Because every device has one connection exit. Even though there are devices, there are some um, uh, hardware devices that you can expand the ports, you know. But it, it can do more than three, four. So you need what a device like a switch. So that you can be able to what expand the connection in the house. But today we don't have to worry about that. Every every home from the service provider, you have what? Wi-Fi. That will now allow you to connect, you know, the devices. But in businesses and in corporations, now it's a blend of both. In our homes, we don't necessarily need a switch in there. But in big companies, you know. Um, and most importantly, people will say, why would we need a Wi-Fi over the cable? You can see that it is important that some people still use the cable because of the data transfer rate. Because the cable transfer much like twice the speed of the Wi-Fi. Think of it like that. Wi-Fi transmit 50 megabits per second. That's the speed against 100 megabits per second the cable transmits 100 megabit this is the difference so you can see that there's what a 50 50 difference already okay so let's look at that now we're going to look at the layers perfect so i remember i mentioned that the computers have a language right and you need to understand that language in order to be able to what protect it because if you don't understand what they are saying or the language it's going to be hard to um to help anything you can't even you can help so this diagram you see is not a big thing it's just telling you the processes and the faces and who the communication happened so let's go back to the previous picture. That will give you a better understanding. Let's we're going to focus on the computer hook to a switch. This is what is going to give you a better understanding. It's saying that computer, this computer here, want to speak to this computer over here. How is the process done? That's what that the next diagram is explaining. What does it do? Okay. So here. So this is the user application. Let's say you open your browser on your computer. You connect to your Wi-Fi. That's one you did. Now you want to talk to another computer somewhere. You don't know. Let's say you don't know in this case, but you want to talk to what? Another computer somewhere. Then you went into what? Facebook. Who do you think you are speaking to on Facebook? <laughs> the Facebook is another computer. Then you are you with your laptop in your house is speaking to a computer in facebook think of it like that your computer in the house is a computer is speaking to what a computer which is facebook think of it like that now what is the process you open the application on the browser that's what you did okay then with a network software like what like let's say the browser is the network software for example you open your what your chrome browser or your safari browser you open that and then you type google.com now that google.com i uh, sorry not google facebook.com you type facebook.com now in, in, instantly what happened you see facebook pop up how do you realize, like, have you ever thought about what went what went on before Facebook came up? Now, this is the, the process that it go through. Now, it's going to convert that Facebook.com into an IP address, okay, using a protocol, a network what? Protocol, okay? 
a network protocol called DNS is going to use that to convert that Facebook.com into what? An address. Because we humans, we only understand what? English better, like the letters. That's what we understand better and, and can remember better than what? Numbers. But I want you to understand today that everything that you see on the internet, like Facebook.com, Google.com, Instagram.com, whatever it is, there is, it is, it is, there's a number that it, it has mask. Like there's a max. The max is the Facebook.com. But behind it is what? A string of numbers. Because computers, they understand numbers better. But we understand what? Letters better. So when you type something, the computer now will convert what you type in the letters into what? Numbers. So that it can process it what? Better. Now, it sends that information over to what? A network interface. Think of your Wi-Fi that, you know, whenever you click on your Wi-Fi, the thing that allows you to be able to see all the different Wi-Fi's that are around you is the network interface card. It could be a Wi-Fi adapter or it could be what? Something you can connect with a cord. Think of it like that. So, now, once you connect to your Wi-Fi, your Wi-Fi in this case is what? The network what? Medium. Okay? Your Wi-Fi in this case is what? The network medium that allows you to what? Go out to the other device. Now, when it hits the other device, which is the other device we are talking about? We're talking about the what? Facebook. Remember, Facebook is a computer what? Somewhere. That's what I'm telling you. So, when it hit the other device, it also hit the other device on the what? On the network adapter, on it also Wi-Fi range area or Wi-Fi connector. Think of it like that, right? Because we're using Wi-Fi in this sense. Now, from there, it starts removing like layers. It kind of like, it's a layered pr process. So, this to me, it's, um, there's, we need a much better diagram so that I can explain to you the different phases but in the first phase it it this is the user we call that whatever information you have at that point we call it what data okay it's data now on the next phase um usually we call there there are seven layers let me make it clear there are seven layers let me bring a stamp in now one second we need to talk about this it's important because if you don't understand it um you won't understand what I'm trying to explain to you in general, but let's see. Can you see my screen? Okay. So we have what? Seven layers. These are the layers that the data pass through to get. Let me make it bigger. One second. Okay. So on the top, of the layer from the top down the seventh layer we call the application layer then number six we call what presentation layer okay then number five on the top we call it session numbers number four we call what transport Number three, we call the network. Number two, we call the data link layer. Data link. And number one is the physical. I think this this is better. This is this this is the much better way to present the diagram, because this one it's the the okay now you see why you have let me show you. Now here how many are these one two three four right, good, and how many are these seven right? It is these seven that they shrunk and made it four. How did they do that? They, they combined the first three and call it the data layer. 
the data. Okay. Then we have the transport, the network. Yep. And the physical layer. One, two, three, four. Okay. It's the first four. They combine the first four and call it the data. Then the network, data link, and the physical. So that's why you have that's why you have what? Four that is left instead of what? So this is what this is how it is. So let me go take you back to the actual the actual diagram before the explanation. So when you type something, the browser is the application. Okay. You the browser is what? The application when you are typing something over there. Think of it like that. Browser. Browser. Okay. You open your browser. What's the browser? Remember the browser is what? Your Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, Safari, and all of those other things that you use to open. Okay. The second is the presentation layer. And this pre presentation layer, this is where, like, you know, when you type information on the computer, the computer itself has to do somewhat encryption and decryption. Okay. It has to do what? Encryption and decryption. You know, and on the keyboard, we see what? A, B, C, D. That is also another level. <laughs> There's so much to this. But I'm trying to do my best to explain to you. Um, just understand that on the presentation layer, the computer is writing some information in an encrypted format, which the, the keyboard and stuff have to what? Decrypt. So the computer can understand the language. So at that level, we have the ANSI, you know, ABCDIC, all those protocols, they exist under what? Presentation layer. Don't worry about these things. Just, I'm, I'm trying to give you a general understanding of what happened when you send information out from your computer, what process it, it goes through, okay? That's what I'm trying to explain. Now, when you type the browser, and let's say you type google.com, google.com. That information will be what? Encrypted or decrypted at this layer. Think of it like that. Encryption and decryption happen on this one layer. That means they're going to encrypt the data and decrypt it on this layer. Okay. Next session. Now the computer will try to establish what? A connection to the what? Way to the google.com. So here connections are what? Established. So you establish connections on this layer. So from your computer, connection will be established to what? The google.com. Think of it like that. And then on the fourth layer, it determines, okay, what is the appropriate method of connection to send this data? And what is the appropriate port? So we're going to talk about port numbers. So if the computer will determine, determine what is the appropriate means? Okay. I'll bring it to the, to the real world in, in, a, in a short while, but now let's focus on this. So determine what is the appropriate, like appropriate means to send out what? This information. So using, what is the mean? Determine the means to send out the information or the data. So it determines on the fourth layer using what? What are ports? And then what? Uh, whether TCP, the protocols, okay, the appropriate protocol, and the protocols are two TCP, remember TCP and UDP. It will determine what is the appropriate method to send out this information and through what port and what? Through what port number? Okay, what port or what number? What's appropriate protocol is going to use? Okay. Now, on the third layer, now somebody's going to ask what is TCP? Transmission Control Protocol. UDP is User Data Ground Protocol. These are the protocols that these things send out. Like the, the two. And the difference between these two is, okay, one of them would, will wait for response. Okay. For example, let's say I call Mercy. I'm expecting Mercy to say yes before I what I go ahead to present my information. That's what TCP does. UDP does not wait for response. So if I say Mercy, I just go ahead. I don't care if she he, if she say yes or no. That's what UDP does. Somebody's gonna say, okay, well, who is gonna be crazy enough to send data using what a UDP? 
Well, de depending on the data type, if it is, this is better for streaming purposes, for, for videos, UDP is better. There's a continuous stream. But with TCP, there will be what? A break in transmission. So this is the reason why people will determine or use, the computer will determine what is the appropriate means to send the information. It's important. Now we have the network layer. Now the computer is going to determine what address am I sending this information to? Please. It's important. Oh, what? I have a question. Yes. All right. Because right. I'm, I'm waiting, waiting for somebody to ask a question and it's, it's not coming. coming. Uh, so, so let me ask you, if I go through YouTube, YouTube via, via my, my browser, browser that is um, um, HTTPS, correct. and, and if, if I start, start hitting YouTube video, mm -hmm. is, is the, the video, video being transmitted UDP? That's a great question. So, um, the point is, you have to ask yourself, what is the means that you are using to access the video? You are using what? A TCP port, which is what? 443. So that's what I'm telling you. It determines, you, the computer determines, and usually it's not me. <laughs> we don't determine that. Remember, the computer determines what is the appropriate means and what is the appropriate port. And depending on the ports, the ports are categorized into what? TCP and UDP. And some of them both. So determining what is the particular port number. Say, let's say it's HTTP. Port 80 is a TCP port. 443, HTTPS secure is a TCP port. So that the computer determines that. Okay? So remember... You use the, the port to determine the protocol that the computer is currently using. Okay. And if you tell me that you go to YouTube, now you have to ask yourself, what is the means you are using to access YouTube? You are, the means that you are using to access YouTube is what? The browser. And then you are accessing through the web. And the web operates on what? HTTP and HTTPS. So that tells you what is the appropriate protocol that the computer uses to access the information. And remember, rem you that means that it's important that you guys remember the, pro the ports and what? The protocols and what? The, let me say port numbers. This is important. The port numbers and the protocols. This is what will help you determine if it's a TCP or UDP. And even when we give you that information or when you search that information, search what are port numbers or example of port numbers, you're going to see that they're going to write them, uh, the different ports, the, the name of the protocol, and if it is a TCP or UDP. And remember, it is a computer that determines what is the appropriate means to send it. For example, if I go to the post office, to send a letter all i have to do is what give them my letter right and then pay them my money right it's not up to them to determine what is the appropriate means to send your letter is, is it up to me to determine that no they have to what determine okay this letter is going to there and there and they they send that out through that their means so remember the computer again determine what is the appropriate means and and that is actually also based on what application you are using to access okay it also depends based on what the application that you are using to what to access very important all right now on the network I have layer, a question. Oh, sorry Mason, can you write the questions you put the questions let's put them at the back else we're going to stay here forever sure. Sure. so put the questions on the on the platform then we um we can be able to attack them when we get to the last. So then on the third part, now after the computer determine what is the part and then what is the, the particular means that I'm going to send this information out through. Now, the next one is what address numbers am I going to send it out through? And this is what happened on the network layer. And the addressing is what? An octet, like an, uh, a 32 bit address. Okay, usually beginning like a 10 point something like that. It's always a 32 bit. Remember, 32 bit means each of these is what? A character of eight, um, eight bits. Okay, 
each, each section is what? 8 bits. So but let's not worry about that. Just understand that on the network la layer, the computer determines what address am I going to send this to. Okay? Now we talk about what? Data link layer. Now, when the computer, now on here, at the local level or at the data link layer, the computer determines what MAC address am I going to use? What? Here, let me put what IP address. IP address. What IP address am I going to use to send the information? Now, on the two, what MAC address? Media access control address am I going to use to send the information? And on the physical layer, that's when you determine, um, are you going to send through what? A Wi-Fi? Or you're going to plug what? Or you will plug what? A cable to connect your internet. So this is the, these are the different phases. I think this, ha this is like a summary of what you need to understand on the seven layers. Application, it, where you open the what? The whatever means that you want to use to communicate. Please, it's not just only browsers. I know that's what all of us know, right? Okay, we also have what we call FTP applications, like FileZilla, it's an application. Let me show you an example of an application. So people, when they talk about brow uh, applications, uh, to go to the internet, all they see, all they see and think is what opening the browser, right? Do you know that this is an application? <coughs> this is called FileZilla. This is an application to communicate over the internet. But this is for what? For file transfer. So you're gonna hear of what FTP? What's FTP port number? Somebody's gonna ask you that. Okay. So FTP for 21, right? For 2021. That's what the user they use. Okay. So so this is the application. So instead of me using my browser to go to the internet, okay, and do my whatever I want to do. Okay. I hate this thing, but what can I do? Just for use my regular profile. So remember, I can go to the internet with with what? My browser and access whatever I want to access depending on what I want, right? But depending on what I want to use the internet for to or what I want to transmit as well, I can use another what? Internet application like a FileZilla to transmit the information. So think of it like that. So that's what I was saying. So depending on what you want to do, the computer determines, okay, I need to encrypt and decrypt the data. That's one thing I need to do. I need to make sure that I establish a connection from where I'm going and from where I am from to where I am going. That is three. Then I need to make sure that I determine what is the appropriate means to send this thing over to what? To the next person. So think of even like you designing a letter to, to send to somebody in, or send a package to Ghana or something. You, these are things that even in a human level that you have to talk about. So it's like, this brings me to a thought that there's a general concept of doing things, especially in communication, and everybody has to sit and plan and do. The, the ways might be different, but is the structure is always what? The same. Okay. You have to determine what means am I going to do. So all the remember the computer determines that. Because if I open FileZilla, oh, you just know that I use this to send files. Oh, the computer know, yeah, you know, you know how to send files, but you don't know that this operates on another level. You don't know that. If I open the browser, it's going to tell, oh, okay. Um, I just know I'm opening YouTube or maybe Facebook, but <laughs> you just know that, but the computer know that, okay, this might be another protocol or a different protocol or based on what you are typing in, it determines where to send it or, or what protocol is the best to send it. Now, on the network layer, we have what? The computer send the information with what? The ad address, an, ad an IP address. Now, the data link layer, this is, MAC address is what we call media access control. That's what MAC stands for, media access control. This is where the computer what? determines what is the, the MAC address that requested the information or that is, is going to use to send out the information. MAC addresses are burned in addresses. This is the only thing that makes your computer unique. Remember that. It's not an IP address because IP addresses is given out by your router in your house 
and it can always change. Remember that. But MAC address, this is the only address that makes your computer unique around the world, the entire world. That's the only thing that makes your computer unique. Remember that. So if you were to commit a crime and they, they are tracing to find if it is you, they, are, they don't use IP address. The IP address will actually bring them to your house Okay, because it's issued by what? The service provider, and they know that they gave this address to this house. That's one thing. But when they come into their house, they still cannot determine if you are the one that committed your crime because somebody could have come and stand at your door, right? Or your, your window, right? And hack your Wi Fi and use it to commit a crime. Do you know that? It's possible. So the only thing they can use to attach you to the crime. That you can never deny is if they find a device with the MAC address that was used to commit the crime in your house. Because this is the only address that never changed. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, on the physical layer, this is where you send the information. Either what, what a Wi-Fi or whatever means. Or Bluetooth. Please think of it. Let me not exempt the Bluetooth because that's, this is what's going to help you understand. Okay, Bluetooth. I hate this thing. So remember the means that you want a physical Wi-Fi or what Bluetooth, whatever infrared. Or think of it like that. Are these seven layers clear? Because this is the fundamental of networking. If we don't grasp this concept of networking, understanding this, because everything that we're gonna do later, everything falls under this. Everything, everything falls under layers. So if you go to steady networking anywhere and you don't understand the seven layers, believe me, you don't. Because everything else falls under the layers. Because when you're talking about security, we're going to talk about what devices fall under these things. For example, on the physical layer, I know that the Wi-Fi or the cable, it falls under what? The physical layer. That means how do we patch our cables? How do we organize them in the way that somebody does not come and cut the cable and then cause us denial of service? Okay, how do we make sure that the cables are run through a pipe into the building and not outside and somebody can just come and stand outside and cut it? So it's security. Remember the cable? Because physical, if the cable is not there, all of this is nonsense. Because without a cable, nothing else exists. Okay, now we have the MAC address or the data link. Usually this is where what? The switch that we are talking about, okay, and then we're also talking about what? Your NIC, your network interface card, you know, this is where all of that operates under the, uh, the layer two. So when we, the attacks that I'm going to do today, app poisoning is one, is, is a what? A man in the middle attack, okay? So it's going to be happening on what? Layer two where we're going to be what? Scanning the MAC addresses and the IP addresses and attacking them. Okay. Now the next one is the IP address. Remember your router is where, this is where your router was. So let me put here, switches, make switches, bridges, that's what we call it. All of them what? Operates on this layer. So these are the devices. So each of these so devices that operate on these layers is very important. So it, it helps you understand that we're talking about network devices, network security. You know, okay, this device operates on this layer of the of the model, of the seven models. This device operates on this layer of the model. This is very important. Without this, you don't have any knowledge. Okay, so network and here the routers, you know. Um, layer three switches operates here because they route packets. Okay. Okay. So, and then what? Some firewalls. That means that combine the routers combine with what firewalls operates here. Okay. And here on the fourth layer, some firewalls operates here. You have firewall. Okay, we're gonna talk about each of these things. So I know they are straight, they are strange to you because you are new in IT. Okay, we'll talk about I'll explain to you what these devices are because these are core. If you understand this alone, and we don't have any class anymore, but it's enough for you. Because if they're saying that, yeah, because if they say, okay, we need to protect the firewall, 
and you don't know where the firewall is. Oh, oh, they said the routers, um, that's where I, I need, uh, we need somebody to give us a better way to secure the router. And you're like, okay, what is a router? Oh, the switches. Um, the, 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 we've, we've sent some app poisoning. Um, they said it's in the switch. Um, what do we do? And you're like, what is a switch? Like, so this is the key. Understanding where each device falls is critical. Very, very critical. Now, on the fourth layer, firewalls, I'll explain to you why. Because when you are when you are permitting, and even when you're going to write your Security Plus certification exam, remember, the, the, the lab that I took, it was a firewall configuration. And they were telling me to write some uh, configuration to permit um, some FTP traffic. So I need to understand what FTP is. FTP stands for File Transmission Protocol. And the port number is what? 21. So usually we say 2021. 20, it could use any of these ports. Okay. I need, I need to know that before I can answer that question. I need to understand that FTP file transmission protocol is its eight port numbers are port 20 or 21. But in the case, if, if any of them is correct, but usually the most commonly used is 21. Okay. Then I need to understand that the device that will allow some traffic to come in or determine what is allowed to come into my home and what is allowed to go out of my house is a firewall. Because that is what determines, remember. So that means that this actually tells you that you can determine what kind of data comes into your house and what kind of data what goes out of your house. So the firewall is the device that, that makes such what? Decisions. It makes sure that, oh, if, if somebody was, a bad guy was to come. So think of it like somebody that at the party, uh, at, the, at the guard at the, what, at the party. He comes, you, he check your name. Oh, oh, what's your name? Oh, mercy. Okay, you are allowed. Go in. Oh, you come. What's your name? And now, oh, no, I don't see your name in here. I'm sorry, you cannot come in. This is the job of a firewall. Think of it like that. Okay. Now, at these layers, that's where what? Your browser, the FTP application I just pulled up for you, FileZilla, or all other applications that you use to communicate on layer five, six, and seven. So this is the application layer. That's where all of these other things exist. Does that make sense? That's Prof. Uh, can, uh, can we take Ajo's question? Yes, Ajo. Um, before we leave. Uh, okay. Yes, I just, um, yes, Professor. I guess at the uh, transport layer, I wanted to find out if you know those operations take place there. Let's just say you go to like a, an unsecure location and you have to use their Wi Fi. Okay. Um, does that fall under the transport layer or it falls under the physical layer? I know you already have Wi-Fi as an example there, but you know most of these hospitals and uh, uh, locations like uh, Starbucks, they are not secure, right? Correct. So I'm asking where does it fall? Does it fall under the transport where you need the TCP and the UDP um, in case you want to pull up, say, um, YouTube or you want to uh, transport some type of file? Um, does it form under the, does it go under the transport layer or the physical layer at this point? That's a, that's a great question, Ajua. But first, we need to understand, okay, one thing I need to make clear for you is here. Let me see, one second. So when you pull up the browser, right, the application here, even though I said that here, that the devices that will create here as like session, presentation, application, but in reality, 99.9% .9 of the time, here, it's this, the first four. 99% because, for example, if I open the browser, if I was to say google.com, you watch, google.com, okay? Now, what do you see? You only saw Google, right? And all I type was Google. But here, if I was to copy this, what do you see here? HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash. So it is most of these things are embedded in the browser. So you see the search the transmission layer because HTTP is what 
a protocol. Let me so here. So HTTP S comma HTTP. They all operate on what? The transport what? Layer. But you see, when you type Google, did you see it at first? No. Right? Unless you click on the Google, and now you can see it's telling you that it's using what? An HTTPS protocol to send your information. And the first thing you need to notice is it's saying what? There's a lock here. That says it's what? Secured. The lock means what? Secured. So Azure, observe. Is the lock secured? Whatever site you are going, not just the Wi-Fi. Don't even bother about the Wi-Fi. Okay, there are different aspects. The question you ask is general. But what I'm trying to clear out is most of these things are embedded on what? The application layer, the first layer. 99.9% .9 of the time. These things are embedded in what? The browser. You see that the browser determines what? The transmission method. If it is HTTPS or HTTP, okay, it determines that. Do you understand? But for the Wi-Fi, that talking about the Wi-Fi security, there are two things in that. First, you need to make sure that the, um, the password encryption for the Wi-Fi is strong, that somebody else cannot come and guess the Wi-Fi password. So that's one of the things you have to worry at the restaurant or at the cafe, we need to worry that somebody else cannot sit and easily guess the Wi-Fi password because once the person is able to easily guess that Wi-Fi password or is able to hack it, think of it two ways. Either they are able to easily guess it or what? Hack it. Those should be your biggest worries because the moment the person... <clears throat> I, I don't even know how to explain this. Like, I don't know if I'm making any sense. And you think of it like your house you have your wi-fi in your house not even the restaurant in your house right somebody is able to come out and stand next to you let even say somebody let's say you're one of your relatives who who wish to cause you harm and see what you've been doing okay they come and stand who maybe who visited your house once and now your the password is saved on their what their phone the moment they just show up at your door they're automatically what connected right now the moment the person phone or computer is automatically connected to your house Wi-Fi. That makes them part or are able to talk to the people in your house. That's what that means. So in the restaurant, if the hacker is able to guess the password because it's too weak, or is able to crack it or hack it before because it's too weak, that makes the person part of the communications that happens in the restaurant. And in that case, makes everybody what? Vulnerable. So that is one aspect that you have to worry about at the restaurant. That the password is easy for them to crack or they are able to guess it. So the moment they guess it and connect it to the Wi-Fi, that means every device over there is what? Vulnerable. Because the person can run some commands and start seeing what everybody is doing. So this is one thing. And the second thing you need to make sure is Am I browsing using a secured HTTPS or am I browsing using what? HTTP. That means the one that is not secure. This is important. And remember, the HTTP protocols, these are for what? The browsers. Anybody that is browsing, for browsing. Google, Google.com, any of the things that you are browsing. The web. The web relies on what? The HTTP protocol. Okay, does that answer the question? Thank you. Is, is it clear? It is clear. Okay, good. So, so in, in short, short, do not, not connect, connect to a public, public Wi-Fi, Wi period. period. There, there are, are some, some standards, standards for Wi-Fi device, uh, devices, devices. But, but we'll, we'll get, get into, into it. it. There's, There's a couple, couple of slides down, down which have information <laughs> on Wi-Fi. Mercy. So, mm -hmm. so one thing I can say about that is, we, we can we can't stop using the the public we, wi-fi we, we can so but, the, so, so the, the thing though the advice should be perhaps perhaps if you are using your web device and you think it has some sensitive information yeah. don't use it on public wi-fi 
Be careful and also, with the ones you connect, period, yes. because there are ones that are very secure and they're the ones that is malicious. Like, you know, you have a threat actor. I, I, I get you. Like, this is very, very true. Very, very true. Okay. So, so, mercy. So, that means I left one other component out in the white. And when I was talking about the Wi Fi in the cafe, the other component is because I was talking about, I talked about only two aspects of what security. That is, make, um, you don't know that maybe the Wi-Fi is easy for them to crack. That's one aspect. The other aspect is maybe if you are browsing, you need to be aware that you are using what? The secured protocols. Because even if the person is able to determine something, but it's hard when you use what? The secured protocols. The other aspect is somebody can set a trap, which I didn't mention. Thank you so much, Mercy, for bringing that up. Somebody can, can set up what? A trap. What does that mean? The person can set up a fake Wi-Fi. And then you just think it's free, right? You jump on. And then you are just right in their port. That's what happened. So thank you so much for bringing that up. So there are a lot of things to be aware of when you are in the public Wi-Fi domain. Um, you have to connect with caution. Connect with what? Caution. But if you think you have some very, very sensitive or work stuff, don't do that. Don't connect to that. The only other way you can do that I will, I will recommend if you have a VPN connection on your computer, the moment you connect to that Wi-Fi, immediately connect to your VPN. That will protect any traffic that is leaving your computer and they can hack that. That is the only suggestion or recommendation I will, I will make on that. Okay. And then we talk about router. The only other device I'm going to talk about here, router, because it's very common. The name as it sounds, it routes what? Traffic. It routes what? Traffic. It determines what is the best path to send out this information or where am I going or where can I find this uh, next? Uh, okay. It determines where is this, this information going. Okay, it tells like, okay, based on the port or the connection that are on it, okay, based on the connections that are onto the router, it tells where the, it, it should pass the information out, okay? So, but it use that, it does that using what? An IP address. So that tells you that every computer has what? An IP address. So let me tell you the structure simply really quick, if not big. Okay, so how an IP address look like. So this is my computer. And thanks to Elite, this is Elite Computer, not mine. So I name it Elite InfoSec. So IP config. This will tell you the addressing of the computer. So this is my IP address in my house for my computer. Okay, this is how it looks like. So anybody want to know if you're in your house and you are using a computer and want to determine what is your IP address that you are using, that the router, this is why I'm bringing it out because I tell you that the routers use what? The IP address to determine where to send what? The information. So if you are in the house and you want to know what is my IP address in my house, you can open the command prompt, you know, and then type IP config is that short. IP config will tell you, IP config, this will tell you the IPv4 address that you have. And this is the what? The information the router will use to determine where to send the information on our computers. Remember, we are talking about what? Routers, uh, sorry, network communications, how the devices in your house communicate. And I'm telling you at each layer what it will use to determine what to do. And I'm telling you that the router will use what? The IP address to determine where to send what? The information. And I told you that the, the data link layer, it will use what? The MAC address. And this is what uniquely identifies your device in the house. Excuse me. Do anybody know how to get to the command prompt on your computer? It's easy. Just press the Windows key on the keyboard. You're going to see that it's going to be, or click on start and type CMD. Click on start and type CMD. And then and click on and press enter or click on command prompt. It's going to pop up like a black screen like that. Don't be scared of it. Just type <laughs> IP config. And then press enter. And if you want to know more, you press forward slash and type all. This will tell you almost every information about the computer, including 
the MAC address information. You see that this is my this is how the MAC address look like. So if you type IP config space forward slash all, it will tell you what? Include the information of what? The, the, the MAC address. So this is my computer what? MAC address. So this is what makes this computer globally unique. Remember that. Globally what? Unique. That's a MAC address. So at the layer two, that's what the computer will use to determine where to send out the information at layer two. But on the physical layer, it uses the Wi-Fi or the cord, okay, or the Bluetooth or whatever means that you have available. And the IP address is also down here. This is my computer IP address. And it tells you the router address. And you see that this is the router address. So whenever you see anything that's a default gateway, it's what? Your router what? Address. Your router address. Okay. And this is my computer address. This is my router address. So my computer will send to the router here. And the router will determine where to send out the information. Easy as that. So now we understand the entire... Okay, so yes. for um, Mac computers, I don't use Mac. Mm -hmm. and so for Mac, how do you get to the command prompt or even the PowerShell? Even okay, Mac, has a PowerShell. Mac is different. Mac is different. So with Mac, what you need to do is you need to... Um, um, I think you have to go to uh, Finder and then go to Applications. And then um, you look for terminal. It's not command prompt. It's called what? Terminal. Once you open the terminal, the command is not IP config. It is IF config. IF config. So Windows is what? IP config. Mac is what? IF config. So, but you, need to, question, but you need to open, you need to open it terminal. Does. Thank you. You need to open terminal first. Terminal. It should be your applications. Terminal. Okay, so we're done with this. Now, let's go to our slides. So, the layers of the network connections communication process. So, here, um, an application tries to access the network resource. Okay, this, so this basically explains everything that we just went in detail. Apologize, Prof. Before we move on, Matilda, what was your question? I didn't see it in the chat. You said you had a question, but I didn't see it. What was that? It's okay. It got answered. So thank you. Okay. Okay. Good. Next one. Now, next one. Ex terms explain. Okay. Now you're gonna hear about land. Pan, man, when? Please, don't don't even give it a thought. Like it's so easy, easy, easy. Now, it's now it's talking about the sizes. Think of it like that. This is talking about what the size of the network. Now it could begin with what a peer to peer, just you and I. Let's say from the human realm, right? It could begin from you and your husband, right? Now. That's a peer to peer, okay? Or personal area, just between like Bluetooth is what that's what they describe. But I want to bring it to the physical realm first, okay? Now let's say you have children. Now the children are now become they are now part of what your network, right? And then let's say with time you have grandchildren. You see the size of the family one keep increasing at different levels, right? So this is the same thing with the what networks or even outside of the family today i could say mercy's network is more than when than maybe three years back okay or maybe four years back her connections are more okay so it that's the same thing that defined the scope of the network so like how big can you say oh this is that that is that okay so um, with the PAN, it's what? Personal area network. So usually for just two devices. Like, but usually for Bluetooth, you know, when you have a Bluetooth connection, like I pay your phone and pay another phone and send information across, that's personal area. Okay. Now LAN stands for what? Local area network. Usually what? 
couple of hundreds computers um or in my definition of land usually i could just say the entire of your house is a land okay as long as the connections are just within your house i just describe it as a land but in more technical terms in more technical terms we say that the ip block is a land you see if you were to check the ip config on all the devices in your house and you realize that all of them have the same number uh, the same number pattern except that the last number changed that would tell you that you are in a land together okay but usually a couple of what hundreds i don't have the exact figures as to how much the number should be but you can google that and see how much what, how, what is the this number uh, total number of devices that constitute a land or the standard that they define as land man the same area metropolitan area network that tells you that the size is even bigger so instead of even look listening to me or listening to the terms look at the picture the small one it's a small size the one that follows what much bigger size the one that follows what much even bigger so metropolitan area network usually cover the size of like a city city blocks you know um that's what they that's that's what they, they used to determine that and as for one who that is like the internet is the biggest of when that's the biggest of the all the wares in the world the internet so but that does not mean that that is the only way remember it does not mean it is what the only way okay that means that if you were to be able let's say you have the knowledge and the ability right to connect your house to mercy's house you just formed a one so and if that one that you just formed with mercy's house does not go to the internet and remember it does not go to the internet that means that none of your devices cannot connect to google or facebook or anything it's just that you can be able to talk to mercy's house and access whatever resources that is in mercy's house and mercy can do the same it is a one okay but that type of one is called an intranet intra that means it's within that means none of your devices goes out to the what the public internet is just totally within but it's a connection beyond just your house and also it could also be one connection okay like a school size and then the devices don't go to the internet it could also be described as what well, an intranet intranet doesn't mean it just means that you have a wide area or a big network that does not go to what the internet that's intra but does that mean that you cannot have an intranet in an internet no you can have there could be some devices that you can program to be able to go to the internet and at the same time be able to access what the local what resources okay so look at it like this pen personal area small size land couple of hundred computers connecting together man a bigger of a, like a city size and when is the biggest of all and the internet is the biggest of what of the when So we have some examples here. See, a typical personal network or pen is what? A Bluetooth connection. Now, even today, it's even a lot more examples with our what? Between our iWatches I, I and iPhones, between our what? Our Bluetooth speak uh, headsets and uh, and then our phones, you know, that's what we call what? A personal area network. LAN. So LAN, as I explained to you, it's a couple of hundred, but with this example, as you can see, PC one connecting to what? Ethernet, Ethernet is the code. Remember, Ethernet is nothing complicated. Think of it, it's just, it, that's the name given to what? The code. The code is called what? Ethernet. But remember, there could be what? Different kinds of codes. It's not just one kind that is just called Ethernet. Now we have a fiber, okay? Fiber optic, you know what? Cables are there that transmit different what kind of signals. Okay, so as you can see, um, the medium, if it is a cable, they are type this another called cogio. 
like our TV cord, like before in the olden days, that that cord that used to run from the antenna all the way at the at the back of the house into the house into the the TV the back. Remember that cord, right? That is the that's a coax cable. It's a type of cord that was used for setting up computer networks as well. So it's not just for our TVs. <laughs> uh, remember that, mm. man. A typical metro metro network or man connector. Okay, like I said, the size of what a CD, and when like having multiple lands, and, and one is a what a wide area network. That means when you combine multiple local area lands, like multiple lands together, you form what a WAN. Then we have the internet, the intranet, and the extranet. Okay, and like I said, the internet is the what the world a worldwide public what internet. That's the I told you that um, the internet it is not the only one, but it's the biggest of the ones. Okay, and then it uses the protocols, the TCP/IP protocols. The TCP/IP protocols are the HTTP, you know, the transmission control and the ports, the all the different things we talked about in the transmission layer, you know. That's what it is. The internet, the intranet is a private what? Internet work in which devices and servers um, are only available to those users connected to the internal network. Like I told you, you can have what? A network between in your house that does not go to the internet. So any network that you set up in your house that you don't have the connection. Okay. This is a perfect example. Have you ever thought about um, you have the Wi-Fi is connected, right? But then you can go to the internet. Have you had that issue before? So, when if you have that issue, if you experience that you have, there was a point in time that you saw that the Wi Fi is saying it's connected, but no internet. If you have a server in your house, at that moment, you could have been able to access that server and, and browse within your house. So, that is an intranet. That means that you did not use what? You, you could not go to the internet and everything was local, but you have your Wi-Fi connected, but it's saying there's no internet. So if you have a server that you, you know how to set up properly, you could have have what? You could have be able to access it still, even though you couldn't go to the internet because your server was what? Internal. It was within. Okay. So like that. So it, think, think of it like that. It's just like you and your family members can just talk to each other, you know, just talking to each other. But then um, you are not talking to any external person, just you and your family members talking. That's intranet. Okay. And remember, in order to be able to talk to your family members, you have, you have to be connected to them somehow to be able to freely talk about some of the things that you talk about. Okay. So that is, that is an intranet. Being able to talk within, but not going outside. Okay. Extranet allows limited and controlled access to internal resources by outsiders. That's great. That's true. Um, just last week, we have an offshore uh, people in India. So I had I, I had to set up like an FTP connection to allow them access some of our resources in our worker environment from India. So this is a perfect example of what an extranet. They are external resources, but they are accessing our internal resources, some of it, not all of it, the, what they needed. And we also have some other like third party vendors, like let's say Walmart and all those other companies that we do business with, right? That we permit them some what? Internal access to be able to send back and forth some transactions and do other things, you know, with them. So this is an, uh, a perfect example of an extra, uh, extra but this means that it requires what? An internet to work. Because for India to be able to access a resource on our company, that means that they have to have what? Internet. Then with that internet, we can set up multiple type of different connections. The one that is suitable for your company or for your business that will allow them to come in and grab something that they need and go back out. That's an extra net. Is that clear? Okay. Uh, next. Um, H -A have a question. H -A. Um, where, where does, does our, our service, service provider fall between, between the, the landman and WAN? 
that where does our service provider fall? Internet, Internet service, service providers. providers. Oh, I believe that, that is what, what you are asking, asking right, AJ? AJ? You said, you said the the ISPs, ISPs, yeah. ISPs, hmm, they are the ones, they are the one providers. They provide us connection to be able to, uh, you know, because land, you can have a land without, so this is how it, it happened. You can set up a pen without internet service provider. Now, think of it like, you. I'm going to even let you, AJ, answer the question yourself. AJ, um, can you connect the Bluetooth to your phone and without having to call Comcast or who's your service provider out there? Xfinity. Xfinity. Okay. Can you connect your Bluetooth to your phone and do your things without calling uh, Comcast? Of course, if I don't have service, I can't. Wait, what I meant is, your Bluetooth to your phone. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, I can. Uh, I should be able to, right? Yeah. So think of it like, what can I do yourself without having to call my service provider? So that is where they are excluded. And your, your question is sunset. No, it's not done. That's what I mean. So for example, in your house, if you know that, okay, even though I, it's saying that my Wi-Fi is connected and I don't have internet, that means I cannot go outside. But I can be able to still do some, I have a small server at home that I can access and do my business. Then service provider doesn't have to come in. The only reason they have to come in is the one, because they are a one provider. One provider. Because they allow you to have access to what? The internet. Okay. So I'll kind of say that it all depends on on what you do or what what you need the, the service for or the internet for okay for example let's say the extranet right think of the extranet i cannot have an extranet connection without having to call my service provider if my internet is not working because i need the internet the service provider are the people that provide us like the internet you know that allows us to connect to the public so that's where they fall in. So in my in my understanding, I would say that in my land, I don't need them. So they don't fall in there. In my intranet, if I have my everything that I have needed in my local environment, I don't need them. So they don't fall under me. And in my metropolitan area, um, you might not actually need them. Because if you have a group of engineers who understand what they are doing, they can set up a wide area network without having to call the ISP. The only time they are needed is the internet. Does that answer the question? Thank you. Mercy, do you have any additions? Oh, oh I, I think, think it, it, I think, think it's, it's perfect. perfect. Yep. Uh, and, and I, I also, also have, have the same belief that um, ISP providers will fall under a man. Okay. So a packet. Oh, this is just, I like this. So before we go to a packet, Packets, packets here, we are in packets. Okay, so here we talked about this. Now, who can tell me where a, a packet will fall under this? That means first you have to understand what a packet is. So, this is why I was telling you the entire of networking revolves around the layers. Packets is the name of the data you are sending, but at every layer, there's a name to it. Again, packet, packet is the name of what? The data you are sending. Data you are sending. So please, if you are sending a letter to somebody in Ghana, the letter inside or the letter, is the letter, let's say the letter itself is what? The packet. The envelope Sealed with the letter is what? A packet. But remember, the data inside the letter, uh, the letter is called what? The data. That is what you are sending in what? A packet. But I said the name, it's actually not just a packet. It's just at each layer, there is a name for it. Okay? So, from the application layer, it is called what? Data. 
application presentation session it is called what data okay now at the transport layer it's not called a data it is called a socket okay it is called what a socket a socket is this this is the format of a socket an ip address this is an IP. Let me use the one that we are familiar. In my house, I have 10.0.0.214. Now, a packet colon, the what? The port number. Let's say I'm using to send what? HTTPS. So 443. So this is what we call what? A socket. Socket. So this is the name of the data at layer 4. So at each layer, there is what? The data has a name. And at layer 4, it's called what? A socket. Because it's a combination of what? The IP address and the port number. Okay? Now, at layer 3, it's called what? A packet. This is where it's called a packet. At this layer, that is called what? A packet. A packet is what? Using the what? The source and destination what? IP address as the header. So, I think there's a further slide that will help. But understand that. At layer 3, is called what? A packet. At layer 4, is called what? A socket. Now, at layer 2, is called a frame. Layer 2 is called what? A frame. Because it's sending with what? The source and destination what? MAC address. Again, it's called a frame because it's sending with what? The source and destination what? MAC address. It's called a packet here because it's sending with what? A source and destination what? Um, um, IP address and here is called what a socket because it's sending with what source and destination what port number does that make sense and when it come to the physical layer who can tell me what is what the name is who can guess it it's an electrical signal Remember, the cable, what does the cable do? It transmits what? Signal. You're, you're only going to get shocked if you cut the cable, right? It's a, it's a signal. Or it's what? A Wi-Fi, uh, uh, what's the name? Uh, uh, signal. Whether it's electrical signal or Wi-Fi, infrared, uh, infrared signal or Bluetooth signal. So at the physical, it's what? It's just a mere signal, elect electrons. You know, zeros and ones that are transmitted in like in, with a signal or with current. So, but at the data link layer, it's a frame because it has to use the MAC addresses to determine the source and destination. Then at the network layer, it's called a packet because it has to use what? The IP address, source, and destination. Then at the uh, transport layer, it's called what? A socket because it has to use what? Source and destination, what? Port numbers. And then at this level, it's called what? Data. Now, Somebody's going to say, okay, how are you going to talk with all these multiple things? Please, it's, it's logic and very simple and straightforward. So think of it like this. Here, it's so easy. Like, people understand this. Like, this. So here, design. Let me bring, I want to bring something and insert something. So this is a circle. This is the data I want to send. Now, this data have to be what? Encapsulated. I hope you understand the word encapsulate. Encapsulate, it means to put something into something. For example, here. So the data is put into what? Something. So here, I'm going to draw the second circle. So the data is put in another what? Into another big... Oh my God, I don't like this colors. Oh, I hate. Mercy. Oh. Yes, bro. <laughs> you see, you see, this is what happens when you do technical. These basic things become tough. Uh, I'm, just no. I'm just trying to put this circle in another circle. Let me just. I don't. Okay. I'm trying to like. I don't know if this guy will understand what I'm saying, but okay. Imagine I have three cups. Okay. Let me let me put like a. I think a, a, a physical example would be better. Um, I'm trying to make this about this giving me too much trouble with all these technicalities. Okay. Here. 
imagine you have three calves that are not of the same size. Like one is small. I, you women, you know what I'm talking about. You you have all kinds of decorations of silver, silver wares and stuff. You know, some are small, some are big, big. You know, what do you do? You encapsulate them, right? You put the big one, uh, the one that is smaller, bigger, and then put in the big one and the bigger one. And that, that is how the data is encapsulated. I hope that makes sense. So, but the data is the, let's say the data is the very small bowl that is on top. Where it where it then it gets into the frame and then and the, it's, it's covered with what the mark and the source and destination mark then it and then it, it put in the next one which is covered with what source and destination or IP address and then in the next one until it get to the uh, the signal and it transmit the signal. I, I don't know. Does that make sense? Is, that, is somebody understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes sir. Oh, we, do we do understand. understand. Pro, Perfect. Yes. Um, <laughs> I, I turned my, my video, video on. on. So. so so, so we, we can, can explain. explain. I'm I'm I just have, have a, a normal full, full case, um, um, glasses, glasses case, case okay? okay? Yeah. And, and then, then I have my glasses, glasses. Uh -huh. and then I have, have another, another uh -huh. um, pocket, pocket here, here that, that I'm, I'm so, so let's, let's say, say um, from, from what Prof is saying to transmit a data, said it's encapsulated. So yep. put it to something. Let's say, let's see, let's see. Can you guys see? Okay. okay. Yes. So, so here, here we go. go. It's, it's put, put in, in here. here. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, bro. So, so at this, this point, point, wait. I can see. You. I can see you. Can, you can see me. You can, can see, see my video. video. Hold on. Uh, can anybody see? Yeah, yeah we can see it. Oh, then I'm missing in the party. Ah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's okay, okay um, um, man. I don't know if you want to stop share for a minute and just see the no, video. Yeah, no, no, I don't know. Like, I don't, this is, oh, I minimized it. Oh, my God, I hate this thing. Okay. Ah, I see now I'm missing. Okay. okay. All, All right. right. So, so while you explain, explain through it, it I'll, I'll, I'll show the example here. here. All, right. All right. So, so the, the glasses, glasses is your, your data, data, I believe, I believe that, that you want to send across. across. And, and per prop. prop. Explanation. It's encapsulated. Like huh? Like huh? So, so let's say it's put into something. Pro, go, go on with your explanation, explanation while I demonstrate. So, yeah, it's put onto something. I want to start to see if I can find some more ways that would have been the like best thing. A calf, a calf, like, like a stack, stack of calves. And, and then once, once it gets, gets to it, 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 it um, Layer, it, it, it does something, something like it fills off, it adds add on something, something. Yeah. And it, yeah. yeah. So, so by the time, time it, it gets to um, when it actually a, it, um, a data, data presented, presented to you, you a decapsulation again. Happens. So, it's, yeah. it, it, imagine it, just imagine like okay, so even a letter is the easiest one, okay. Yeah. So, because when the person receives the letter, what do they do? They're going to open the letter, right? And take the uh, open the envelope, and then what? Remove the letter, right? Definitely. So that means that the letter was inside what? An envelope. An envelope. An envelope. So that, that is the that's what we call encapsulation. So at each of the layers, as I was explaining to you, at each of the layers of the OSI model, the data is what? Encapsulated. It encapsulated because somebody will be saying, okay, I said um, it's going to use port address. It's going to use, okay, how is it going to send all of this at once? No. At each layer, it's kind of like all of the all of the layers are important, and it, it goes through all the faces. And see, think, think it like that: it goes through what all the faces. But it starts with the application. Then once it got the data, now it put the data inside an envelope, which and send it to what the transport layer. Oh, this is the best example I can give. Imagine the letter before you get the letter. Where do you, where? What happened? Let's say you are sending it from Ghana, from Ghana to America, right? You first you put it in an envelope and take it to the what? The post office. They're going to take a car and put it in the car, right? It's encapsulated and and, and moving by what? A car, right? And then it goes to a car. Then they take it. Let's say they take the car along with the envelope and put it in the plane, and then now bring it to America. And now the person now come out, drive the car out. So that's where the decapsulation process is going to start. Where the, the car will now come out of the plane 
and drive to your house. And now what? Bring out the letter. That's a decapsulation. Now you now take open the letter and now read the letter. Do you, do you, does that make sense? I think this is the perfect example that somebody can give with encapsulation. Yes, it does. Okay. And, and, and imagine each of the layers has been followed during the entire process. You put in the letter, that's the data. Take it to the post office, that's the transport layer. Now they put it in the car, you know, head into Accra and now to the, uh, to the to Kotoka or whatever it is. Then from there, what? Now they, they put the car along with the letter and put in the plane. Now bring it to America. Then the car come out of the plane. That's where the decapsulation process will begin. The car come out of the, uh, car of the plane, w drive to your house, give you the letter. Now you take out the letter and then open it, you know, and read it and say, oh yeah, she said hello. That's, this is what happened. This entire process is followed before you receive and send messages over the internet, emails, whatever it is. Now, this is what we do. Now, that is what we call networking. Now, now let's go into the technical details. Now, somebody's going to say, okay, if we say now it, it, it begins with a signal, a data, then I end at a signal, and then it go to the other end and start decoupling. Well, then why the, and, and then a uh, network layer is all the way in the middle. Why does it begin in the network layer? See, you can see that the logic is reverse, as you can see, right? Mm -hmm. It began from the network because the routers in our houses are the entry and exit point. Everybody connect to the what? The router, right? Yeah. And the router is in, in layer what? Remember, don't forget, I told you router was in layer three, you see? Network layer. And at this layer is called what? A packet. I hope it all comes together now. It all came together now. Here, now it's saying network packet. That's from layer three. Because the, the device that the Comcast gives you in your house is called a router. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if you have another device, let's say you want to have more than one physical connection. You have three routers or four routers. Oh, sorry, not routers. Computers that you want to connect with a cord. The switch is the only medium that can help, help you expand the connection from your house. You know, it's just like an expansion device. How do I connect? Because Comcast, possibly, maybe your Comcast router or extended router just only have four network co connections that you can connect. And you have five. How do you connect uh, five cables on a four? You need something that can expand the connection, right? And that is where switches come in. Switches just expand what? The network connection into the devices in the house. Does that make sense? Yeah, and it over to the internet, and then it goes and hits somebody else the router in their house. Mm -hmm. Then maybe if they also have a switch or not, or they have Wi-Fi, it's just going to go straight to the device, and then the person can see the message. This is the process, and this is a, this is an example of what encapsulation. A frame is what uses the source and destination MAC address, and put inside what a packet. Uh, it's inside where yeah, and the packet now the now is heading with what. Source and destination what IP address, and then again onto the transport layer, it, it, it turns to what a socket going what what port addresses and source and destination ports. Now, network models you have a what peer to peer that means just you and your friend, or you and your friends, because usually people just think peer to peer just means one on one. Okay, it could just be a, com a conversation just between us. This conversation that is happening between us right now is a peer-to-peer. -peer. Mm -hmm. Okay, just us having a conversation. But the, what you have to understand, the difference is that in a peer-to-peer, -peer, everybody has equal rights and privileges. That means everybody has equal knowledge. So to some extent, we could call our session maybe client to server, or we could call it what? Peer-to-peer -peer with respect because everybody have what? And knowledge that is different than the others, and that if we, if all of us were to share in our professional field what we do, we realize that we are all what on the same level. So, client to server just mean that the clients are getting information from a device. A server is just like like the name said, a server. It serves. What does it serve? It serves whatever you want. Okay, whatever you want. That's what it will serve you. And so this will determine 
uh, depend on what you want your server to do. So if we say that, oh, what is a server? You don't need to give any specific definition of a server. Just a server is a device that serves. And you are right. Now, depending on what you want to serve determines what? Your server model. What kind of server you need to install? Okay. For example, if I want to share, I want, I want my server to just be dedicated for files or sharing files. It's a file server. Okay. I want my uh, my server to be able to uh, um, display web pages for people to browse like Facebook and stuff. Then it becomes what? A web server. Then if I want to, uh, to use it to manage my computers in my, in my house, you know, and, and create usernames and passwords for people in my house to use, then it becomes what? An Active Directory server. Oh, I wanted to give out addresses to the computers in the house. So servers could be given specific jobs to do. And depending on that specific job that, job that it does, that is what Okay, depending on the job that it does, that is what, um, that's why you get the name, okay? So now let's go, client request and server gives. That's the same, it's the same thing I just said, uh, what's the name? A server action. So how does a server work? Like I was telling you, depending on the job that you want the server to do, that is where the server name comes. And if you ask for information based on that, it will give you what you ask for. And these are the different types of servers. So we have physical servers, and we have what? Uh, software servers. Okay. So, and we have, and like I was telling you, you can go to what? A knife fight, I'm uh, sorry, a gun fight with what? With a knife. So, depending on the job or the organization size and the job, that the tax that they do, people will buy the hardware that will match the kind of what? Job. Because if you go and take your web computer or desktop computer, it can do nothing for a big organization. So, that's why you have these big, big devices as service. Because they make it in a way that it could be able to run for a long time without having to shut down, without having to fail. So they have to make sure they do everything they can. So we have the types of server. Like I told you, depending on the job of the server, then you have what? The type of server, right? Web server for what? Seven web pages. Email server for seven emails. Fax server for fax. FTP for what? File transfer. News server for news. Streaming for streaming. Like just like that. Just depending on the name. You give the server. So you can even have a NAS server. You know, <laughs> you can have Mercy server. So depending on what we all provide you, that is what it, uh, the server name could have. So we're going to describe the basic operations and network repeaters uh, and hops. Can we get just five minutes? All right, we're going to give you five minutes. Mercy, when we have five minutes back, let's do the labs. Okay. Then after that, we just conclude with the writing, with the, with the, um, with the rest of the slides. Is that okay? That, that is fine. Okay, Thank let you. me get my laps ready. Five minutes, mm -hmm. okay. Five, Five minutes,
We are supposed to close at 12, guys. So 12, hopefully we can close, but if not, and you guys can just give us 30 more minutes because we want to cover materials related to uh, um, networking. So next week we can move on. Are we, are we, are we all, all good? good? Yes, yes, we are. Well, well I am. Yeah, yes, we are. Awesome. We're good. 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 Now, now let's, let's do some attacks, attacks, man. Yeah. Okay. So today, I just, one of the things that I wanted to do is um, I'm going to do a denial of service attack. You're going to be hearing that a lot. DOS, denial of service attack. We have what we call DDoS, distributed denial of service attack. So these attacks are done to cause like, to, to interrupt, like let's say the normal operations or shut down servers. That means if the server was up and running, um, this attack could literally just shut the server down. Okay, so for example, I made my Windows 7, this is my Windows 7. So as we were talking about servers, I turned this Windows 7 machine into a web server. That means that if I was to check the IP address, let's check IP address, CMD, IP config, and you're going to see that this is the address I gave it, 10.0.0.197. That means if I was to open my browser here, and I type here, that 10, instead of, okay, now this is where the, uh, DNS will come, but this is a good understanding because it helped you build some solid background. So here, I'm going to type in the address over here. 10.0.0.197. See? It launched, it launched my web page. I have a web page in here. This, this is mine. I built this. You see? You can enter information in and log in, but I don't have another page because it's only one page in there. So let me show you the file. It's really important. Um, here. So I made my, my computer a web server. So if I was to enter the IP address of my computer, it will pull up what? A web page for me. And this is internal. It's not any external. I built it. So this the site. I hosted it here. So I'm going to right click on it and rename it because I want to use for, I want to do a different purpose, different example. Okay. So, so right now, if I was to enter the address again, I'm going to get 10.0.197. Second, I need to refresh the page. Yeah. I'll delete it. Continue. Okay. So the purpose of this is I want to be able to pull up the web page first to see if the web page is running. Then the zero the zero dot zero dot one nine seven. Okay, so the, I changed the web page that I designed to a different to default web server page. Okay, so now you see this server is running. As you can see, it's what it's running. So I'm gonna pull up my script. So this also will tell you about the purpose of what script kiddies. So these are people who don't know anything about programming, but they understand programming codes and they can use it. To attack people so this is a programming code that was developed by one of my friends in my ethical hacking class let me show, share the code with you don't worry about the code the most important thing is how it works okay how we're going to use this code to cause a denial of service attack to this web server that is running on Windows 7 okay so let me look for the file uh, DD DOS how is it Second. It's on your desktop. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's on my desktop. Oh, but I, I don't want it to be in my desktop over there. I want it over here. So here, I think I know where it is. Okay, I have the file here. Let me share the file with you. Uh, right click, edit, and make file. So this is the code. 
this is the this is a code that was copied. It was a vulnerability that was determined, I think, on the vulnerability database or is it was an exploit database. That was the name of the database. So he copied the code and he modified the code. And I can literally use this code to attack any web server. So, but this only works on like outdated operating systems. So this is so this is to tell you that updating systems are very what important. Always make sure that you if there's a, a outdated system in the workplace, encourage that they what they upgrade it or make improvement on it. So I'm gonna run this script because this is the code. I'm gonna run it and you see what it was gonna ask me to do. So first, in order for this attack to work, that means that the attacker might have to be what in the same network environment as you. What does that mean? When I check the IP address configuration, what does it say it's my address? You can see that it said that my address is what? 10.0.0.0.197. And if you could remember clearly, when I pulled up my own IP address, it was what? 10.0.0.214. What is the difference? You could see the difference is on the last address. So this, along with the second Figure, you see the second figure is what? 255, 255, 255, the zero. This, you can see the same thing again. 255, the 255, the 255, the zero. This makes me conclude that I am in the same network environment as the host or as the one that I want to attack. Now, now that I have been able to be on the same network as the person, then I'm going to run the script that, I, that the script he developed. If you run the script, this is how the interface is going to be like. Don't worry about the interface. Just look at the impact it's going to cause on the server the moment I run this. Now, it's going to ask, what is the server that you want to attack? What is the IP address? In this case, it's 10.0.0.197. So, 10.0.0.197. Then, what is this? 10.0.0.197. And press enter. Okay, it's going to ask me, which port do I want to attack? That, that's the application asking me this question. So I'm going to put port 80 because web server default port is what? Port 80. So these are things you need to know. HTTP default port. HTTP is what? That means it's web. It's 80. Port 80. So remember that. HTTP is what? Port 80. Always remember that. HTTPS. The secured one is 443. Don't forget that too. HTTPS port is what? 443. That's the, the one that with the S. But the one without the S is what? 80. 80. So now, can somebody tell me what would have been the thing I would have done to make this attack not happen? Secure the HTTP to what? HTTPS. Yes. But in this case, it's vulnerable. So I'm going to attack. So it's going to ask me, what am I going to attack? I'm going to attack the default page. The default page is the welcome. Okay. Is the welcome page. I'll show you the page by when I'm done. So forward slash welcome. So the, the entire syntax is 192 no 10.0.0.197 forward slash welcome dot png and press enter. It's gonna tell me, would you like to run this exploit? The server is vulnerable. It has detected that the server is what vulnerable. The, the script has detected the script the script has detected that the server I'm going to yes do you see that yes so this is just a simple script that was developed by what a script kiddy and look at what it, it did to your server your web server and why because you are using what HTTP not HTTPS okay you need to secure and then because what you 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 just was reluctant to turn off your antivirus, or maybe because your firewall was giving you a problem for some stupid software, you turn it off, and as a result, boom! Look at what happened to you, and you are down. And if this keep happening, this will called denial of what service Sorry. attack. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so guys, guys you see, see all, all the other, other defense, defense mechanisms, mechanisms that, that he, he had to bypass to take, take down, down that, that website. website. So, so even if it's, it's HTTP, HTTP port 80, 80 okay, okay, 
if you've if layered, layered additional security, security on there, there like, like firewalls and antivirus and all of this, it, it could help deter the attacker, the attacker right? right. Um, right. But, but if all the other, other you know, controls, controls that, that are, you know, are, are not, not layered, layered on, on and, and it's, it's just, just vulnerable, vulnerable like, like that, that, it could easily, easily take it out. And that's what he did. So, so if you are serving, serving people, people on that, that um, web, website, website, if you're using, using it for business, business and it's vulnerable, vulnerable like this, this, you see how, how easy it is for an attacker, attacker to find a, a, a script written by somebody. Right. Just, just use that, that script and just, just take it out. It could be like script PD, and we'll explain that further. You know, they have a little bit of knowledge, not a lot. So they take script written by people modify it a little, little bit and, and just take, take it down. down. And, and they're, they're not, not doing, doing it in anything for fun. Or, I, mean, I mean, they're, they're just, just doing it for fun. fun. A, lot a lot of times, times you know, they don't, don't have, have any demand. demand. Just, just so cool. cool. It's just, just so cool. cool. I'm trying to find, I'm, I'm going to do another one. And this one is to tell you another importance of HTTPS. And, uh, and this one is going to be a man in the middle attack. Have so, you guys felt, felt like, like, you know, sometimes, sometimes you're, you're on, on the, the web, web doing, doing something, something but someone, someone is watching you, you the cursor says stuff, stuff is moving without, without you moving it? it. I, don't I don't know if anybody, anybody has experienced, experienced that, that, but, you know, you know potentially, potentially there's a man in the middle. middle. Okay. So first, this application that I launched is called EtherCap. This application will allow me to literally do some scan and perform a man in the middle attack. So it gives you the, like when you, you know, when I scan, this is all the devices in my house. See, all of them are connected. You see, my router is what? Dot zero dot one, always the given the first address. And you see each of them and they are what? Corresponding what? MAC addresses. This is what uniquely identifies them. So the, the server I attack, my web server in my house, the, what I, I attack is dot one nine seven. So this is the one I want to do a man in the middle attack on. So I, what that means is I want to serve as the a middle person between the server and my router so that if, if this person is doing anything, I can be able to monitor which website they are going, you know, even if they are on that website, if I can, I can see the page, the pictures of the, of the pages that they are visiting, showing up on my attacker screen. So I have two computers here. So I have my Windows 7, which, is, which I'm going to be using for the browsing. So first, you need an outdated computer that Windows 7 is out of date, and then an outdated browser, even though it still works. And uh, I have my Kali Linux. This is the software that we use for hacking. Okay, so I'm going to now add this as my target, the, this, the, the person that I found that I want to ha hack. So in this case, the person might have done some recognizance at uh, some attack, like on the, he might go around do a survey about you and your environment. The people don't just come attacking. They have to get prepared. Please be aware of that. They have done some research about you and they know these things. So um, if you're in the restaurant too, this is what the person will see. He will see every device, but he will not know because there's no description. He will not know, okay, is this for Wajo? Is this for who? Is this for who? He will not know that. But what he will know is that he's seen IP address corresponding to people and he can spy on you like that. Okay, so this is the host I want to I want to uh, attack. So I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna do a man in the middle attack here. So I'm gonna do ARP poisoning. This is gonna poison the um, the address resolution protocol. Okay, so once I have that on, then I can go and then run a command. Go run a command, and um, this command is going to be Trifnet. So this will open up a window for me so that I can be able to see whichever website this person is going to be visiting. So I'm going to go to the computer and start browsing. Regular browsing, you won't see anything because HTTPS is protecting them. So assuming you were to go to some websites that are not secured, I have some examples of some websites that are not secured that I did some research on last night. I'm going to show you of those websites. Please, this is not illegal, okay? This one that I'm doing, it's not a bad thing. So 
this is I have some list of website. I think I I saved uh, I saved the URL. One second. I don't want to keep searching for it. I need to just pick up what I have already. I think it should be here. Oh. Okay, here. So I did some uh, research and I found out that this site, see this site over here, people.com. This server here doesn't have, it, it's not protected. You see, what does it say? Not secure. That means it's not, it's HTT, it's, it's run on what? HTTP, not HTTPS. So a site like that, if we if ever go on any site like that on a public site, just know that you are at risk. Or if your company, there is a particular site that you guys go and it's always saying you are, or you need to provide additional permission because this site is not uh, secured, you have to be wary of that. This happens most of the time, but we ignore it. And when that happens, you need to let them get a certificate, SSL certificate, secure cell certificate that will allow them to keep it protected. So if I go to a site like this, but here, look at the list, you'll be shocked. So these are all the list of all the list in the world that I that these people have gathered that are that I have inside that are unprotected. So if I click on any of this, you might see it telling me that it's not secure. Okay, this particular one is so that way maybe they they got aware of it and keep themselves out. Let's see this people are they protected? You see, this one too are uh, safe, but one of the interesting things was this is what I found. Let me show you. I found out that this university, Boston University, I don't know whether it's, it's true or not, but this is Boston University, uh, bu.edu or .org, Boston. It's not protected. It was part of the, the, the sites unprotected. Yeah, there you go. And they are even doing their graduation stuff. You see that, right? Here, not secured. So imagine I was to visit that site on my uh, on my on my computer on my head because the hacker is watching over here. That's horrible. So, yeah, so, so I think that bu.edu. Bu okay, here. Yeah, you see, and the page is not opening. It's not so he's saying to help protect what do you see guys no you, you don't you're missing the point what do you see do you forgot and the hackers computer this this picture was captured from the page see the woman yeah. so the hacker is sitting there on his Linux computer over here, and watching, and watching the students, uh, watching whatever you're doing over there. You see, so let's go back to another one. People, the China, the China people. What do you see? So as as you browse and scroll, look at what's happening. The hacker is there watching what you're doing. So all of this is showing on the hacker's computer. And he's not on your computer, he's on his computer monitoring everything you're doing. Now, another one I'm going to show is the URLs. So you're going to see, you're going to see that they can see even see the website that you are going to. That is if the site is not secured. Please, this is important, if the site is not secured. So here, let's see. So it's listening. What did it say? On port 80. So anybody that ran anything on port 80, which is not secure, that means they can see. Oh, hold on. So let me exit out of here. So it's listening right now, but it hasn't done anything yet. So let me go to any, one of the unsecured sites again, looking for something. This one is secure, so I won't be able to get anything of it. Let's say GU. I might have to close this. 
I'm telling you some refresh. What do you see? It's a bunch of writings, right? Mm -hmm. But it's telling us every detail of whatever he's doing. The site that he's visiting. So that you can, if you click on these sites, you can see. So here, that he went to this site. He went to cloud topography. Anywhere you go. So and any other link that is connected to this website are highlighted on this. See? So they can see the website that you are visiting, everything. So let me check back and see which other website is unsecure that I can run another one so they can see. Uh, but while you this there, you don't know what's going on. Oh God, sites. Okay. So any site that you visit, it's going to start detecting, what is the computer over there? Here. So I'm going to have to go to, I want to another site to try, just one last site, because you've already understood the concept. So it's, that's the most important part. Um, understanding the concept is the most important part. And the essence of why we have to be keep ourselves safe you know, even the little thing you can do, little like, you know, using browsing with HTTP, if you ever suspect that somebody is in your workplace or or in or somewhere that somebody you know is using the browser, always telling, warning you that it's not secure, you can tell them these are the these are the reasons why they have to keep it secured. You know, stuff like that. I can't find another site, but. You can always Google any like sites that are like unsecured. It can give you a list of them, and then um, you can always test it like that. But as you can see, you've already seen the result. We did three attacks, actually two. Uh, we did the URL. You can see the URL. We can see the pictures. And uh, one other one I wanted to do, unfortunately, was to reveal the username and password. But unfortunately, the server that, as you can see, my screen. Let me um let me quit this. Oh, uh, stop! I'm not, I want to stop the attack. So, so. Okay, perfect. I'm close out of here. I'm close out of here. One of the things I wanted to show you was uh, so any side that I visited, these are the pictures they can see. So if you are doing something inappropriate, they can see everything. So um. Now, the other thing I wanted to do was, I wanted to show you my screen here. I have this server, I mean, it's, a, it's a, actually it's a router. So it's a router that I ran, but unfortunately it crashed. I don't know what happened. I used it last night. Um, it possibly crashed. I, it, it might need me to rebuild it. Unfortunately, I, we don't have enough time for that um, because the router initially, so this happened with all new devices. By default, they might come with HTTP, not HTTPS, to allow you to initially log in and configure it. So the problems that most technicians or engineers do is they, they, they always leave the default password on. So, and when they do that, or the default configuration on, if they do that, anybody can, can be able to monitor and capture the password, and the username and password that you use to log in. And then it will be easy for them to log in afterward. Unfortunately, the server crashed on me. It didn't want to set. It, wanna, it didn't want to start. And I don't have enough time to rebuild it. I would have rebuilt it and then show you how they could easily capture your username and your password to when you are trying to enter into an unsecure website. Not just like their initial router. Right? Let's say if there's a site right that is unsecured. And then it's, but it's also requesting you to put in some username, credentials, and password, right? When you put in that information, it will reveal as plain text. This would, it would, would have captured them in plain text for you to see and know that this is really, really dangerous. 
So that was the stimulations. Um, we don't have enough time, and um, possibly if I do have some more time uh, that I available, I could talk to Mercy and have time to come back oh, and yeah, show you some, some demonstrations. Really. But right now, um, let's proceed with the slide and possibly finish it up. And then if you have any questions, then we can look into that. So this is saying yeah. what we're going to look into, describe the basic operations of the network repeaters, hops. Okay, now before, repeaters are like before, right? Or even now. One thing you have to understand, there are some technicalities. You yeah. cannot run a code like... Yeah. Hey, somebody say something? Sorry, Lewis, can you, can you mute yourself? So, you cannot run a code more than 100 meters without a repeater. A repeater is a device that, that reboosts the signal after, what, 100 meters. Okay? So, what that means is that if you run a code longer than 100 meters, so after 100 meters, the signal strength starts to, what, degrade. So a device like a repeater will help you to be able to what? To do what? To reboost the signal so they can continue to be what? Strong. Is that clear? Now a hub is the same. It looks like it's the same as a switch, except that the switch is what? More secure. Yeah. It, it's more secure. And uh, so... Remember, before, the, these hubs are very dumb. They are not intelligent, but switches are more intelligent. So this, the hub and the, 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 the switch are all the same. Remember, it's just used to expand what? The connection. Just think of it like that. That's what a hub does. Explain the purpose of the network. I already explained to you earlier. And summarize the operation of wireless access point. Okay, access point. Okay. Access point is what we use. Like Think of it like modern day switches. You know, the physical switch is the one that you connect the cords on right how about wi-fi devices they also need something that they can connect to to expand the connection right wireless access point is what help wireless devices expand the connections so this was the first uh, type of network that we used to be there it's called the linear topology that means all the computers were connected in one line this is very very old technology um today people connect like that to a repeater device or or switch or have, you know, to expand the connections. Remember, this is just to help you expand what? The connection. Okay. So we have network switches. Okay. We talked about switches in so much detail. And I told you that switches are the ones that uses what? The MAC addresses at layer two to what? To send the information across the network. I already told you on there. Uh, please, this should be your takeaway for today. Take this picture and then revise it as much as possible. It has so it's small, but it has so much detail in there. Okay. Then access point, as I told you, is like the same as what a switch, but is doing the connections for what wireless devices. It used to expand the connections for wireless devices. So these are Wi-Fi um, certifications or standards. Um, each of them, the difference are just based on the amount of megabits it transmits what per second as you can see 72 to 643 443 to 6900 this depends how many megabits or uh, mega, uh, how much megabits per second that it transmits okay so these are different wi-fi standards so wi-fi security the least you can do with your wi-fi is to at least put a password if you even just even admin or one just some single stream of password just type something small um to be there but don't leave it open for the public or and be wary of any wi-fi that is said it is open that means no no password be wary of it be scared when you connect it and this is how a network interface card look like that is the one that actually have the mac address on your computer if it is wi-fi the, the mac address is in your wi-fi adapter inside the computer if it is uh, uh the, this is the other way for the wired this is for the wi-fi Okay. Yeah. So as and I also explained to you what routers does. Routers are the devices that actually route the what the traffic. You know, it route traffic to uh, from different lands. Okay, from different networks. It just makes sure that if you come to the router with information, it look and say, okay, where is this information going? And that is the one that uses what the IP address. Okay. The switch use what? The MAC address. Okay? To determine that. And if it is a Wi-Fi, it's the NIC that perform 
that function for you. And sometimes some routers even come a combination of both routing and switching as combined. Routers connect as LANs. Okay. And this is the, the look at the connection as in businesses. In businesses, because of the sizes, so they have to have multiple switches. You can see switch one, switch two, switch three. And then they even have to separate them to make sure that if somebody was to get hacked on one of these areas, these other sides will be protected. So this is the best design you can do for your business. Don't put everything in one place. See, marketing server, uh, broadcast domain, uh, what's the name? Uh, uh, management server, developer. See, they categorize everything. So this is the, the best design that you can ever give to your memory. Default. Uh, routers work with IP addresses like I already explained to you. So most of these things that we are seeing is just like additional. And the IP address of the router is always called the default gateway. You always hear that a lot. Yeah. You see, this is also talking more about the design of the network. The router is here connecting to switch. The switch is to help expand the connection. Remember that switches help expand the connection. Router to another switch. And this is just to help separate the network, to segment the network. It helps for security and also for um, um, better use of bandwidth. So enterprise networks, see, firewall. Some people have firewall and their router separate. Some people have the firewall along with the router all built, combined, and all of that. So this is what happens. So what is an enterprise network? Enterprise networking refers to what? The physical, virtual, and logical design of a network and how the various software hardware protocols work together to transmit data. Yep, exactly. So it's um this as i already told you the design of a network or enterprise network it depends on a lot of factors you need to determine um what kind of devices do you, you have to use the topology the ip addressing and then make sure there's some redundancy then traffic management traffic management here is which traffic do you want to prioritize if you have a phone system in there you want to prioritize your voice over your data text data so that's where the traffic management comes in yeah, and also redundancy talking about if, let's say, um, you, you have one router and it wants to be hacked, that means you are all down. So you need at least two routers that if one down, the other one can continue. Or at least two service providers, you know, one for at and one for what? Um, Xfinity, so that if Xfinity was to go down, the other one can continue for continuity or business continuity. Now, device selection, you have to look into like, what, as in security, and then this also goes with the cost because you have to make everything along with what? A budget. You know, everything has to be with what? Within the budget. So you have to understand um, what do I, what is the size of the network? Um, um, what kind of devices do we need for this kind of setup? Um, what kind of regulatory requirement do we need to fulfill? Or what kind of devices will be best for us to fulfill those regulatory requirements? You need to look into all of that into perspective. The topology is talking about the design, whether ring, star, star means everything connecting to one single device, you know, and then the line means the linear. That was the vast topology I told you in the first one. We do have some other combinations um, that you can talk about. Benefits of enterprise network. Bro, yes. Um, I just, I just would like, like to reiterate, reiterate like, like, you know, know when, when we, we talk, talk about, about an, an, an enterprise, enterprise network, network, what is, is it made out of, of you know, you know mm -hmm. talking about the endpoints. End Ooh, and, and I'm, I'm just bringing this up because when you go to, uh, to work on the job, you hear these buzzing words. So yep, yep. I want you to understand that, you know, an endpoint, you know, your PCs, your laptops, your mobile devices, the servers. And then we have your network devices, which profiles feed it to death, which is your repeaters, your breakers, the switches, firewall storage and stuff. And then, you know, all the communication protocols that we've talked about, um, like the uh, HTTPS, FTP, uh, FTP, SFTP. Um, and then, you know, we've already talked about your LAN, your local area network, we've talked about your WANs. And so collectively, they all enable communication and information exchange among enterprise users, which enterprise used to be your organization. So for um, AJ, who work at Navy Federal, when we talk about enterprise network, I'm talking about all these, like, your infrastructure and all those, your endpoint devices. Okay. Yep. So benefits of the enterprise network, as we talk about, you know, efficiency and productivity, yeah, because if you take your time and design your enterprise network well, people are going to have much better speed working, faster computers, you know, and uh, 
and then things will improve and then productivity will increase and then enhance security. You know, a better design of the enterprise network, uh, you know, uh, making sure that you put all the security controls in place, which we'll talk about later with Mercy. Um, you're going to realize that um, all of this is from some time for regulatory requirement and you to secure the user data, you know, and make sure that your um, sensitive information doesn't go out there. Um, better design of the enterprise that will reduce what downtime that means that if you have redundancy in place and then they, you, there was to be a downtime then you can automatically start the backup and then things can continue as if like nothing happened and then also minimizes cost because you pay people and if you have a better design that means that there will never room for idle people will always be working and working their ass off for you so we do have our enterprise um security threats Look, talking about malware you know, advanced persistent threats, denial of service attacks. We, we did this one. So these are some of the things, the threats that are available, um, that are possible in, uh, in, the work, in the work environment. You have malware, you know, as in like a software that is designed for, to, I mean, to cause harm, you know, you know, it's a mal, like to cause, like cause some kind of harm, you know, and then we have threats, you know, some threats, uh, categorized as what advanced persistent um we do also have denial of what service attack which we did as uh, uh, something that is done to just cause what a destruction or stop business um continuity um that's a denial of service like for example as i was hacking the server and crashing imagine somebody was trying to buy something on ebay and i keep crashing that server like that that means you guys can never get to buy anything or i keep attacking on amazon like that nobody's going to be able to buy nothing so that is what this is all about. No, so, like, one, 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 one last thing, thing and um, I don't know if you can, you can go ahead and explain, explain what a threat, threat is, so, so they can understand how I can attack. Um. Okay. Threats. Based on my understanding, a threat is anything that is like uh that have the a potential or like a vulnerability. I I look at it like uh, a threat is something like an opening like something that have the potential or the possibility to cause what a harm or something like that so that is what a threat to me is so anything with the potential or the uh, the possibility to cause what a harm or attack or or, or what's the name destruction or i mean denial of service or anything in that particular regard to me it's a threat okay um so we do have what we call vulnerabilities as well. Vulnerabilities to some extent are things that like, like these are things that the attackers, what, exploit, like any form of weaknesses in the system that an attacker or somebody that is that have a bad intent can exploit. That's what we call what, a vulnerability. I think we're gonna look into these things in details uh, when we start into Mercy's class, because this is more what she does. Um. We're going to look at securing enterprise network. What are some of the things that we can do? So initial configuration, please. That's what I was saying. If mostly default initial configuration is out there on the internet. I remember one time Mercy called me um, with some issue in her house. Then, then I was like, okay, let me check the router. I'm like, okay, boom, boom, admin, admin, boom, I'm in. I'm like, what? <laughs> No, Let me see. No, basically, that this is technical, you know. And most important, you don't have any supervisor on you to say that. Let's check evaluate the configuration comp to make sure that the router is secure. You don't have anybody on you, so. Okay, so please, default configurations are you can browse and search them and say, okay, what's the, for example, let's say I just go into the browser and say, what's the default password for my Comcast modem? You're gonna be surprised when they're gonna give you the answer, you know. So these are not hidden. So it's important that the basic security. Just put it in place. What is Comcast default password, username and password here? And then they're just going to give it to you, admin and password. So imagine now you have an Xfinity box in your house. And I guess most of us in this call are victims. You know, you have an Xfinity box in your house and somebody know that the default gateway is always so easy. So imagine somebody was to type in 10.0.0.1 in my house. And my router pop ups and say, What's the username and password? And they put admin and password and boom, and they're in. That's what is happening. So you always change that. Remote installations, please try to as much as you can avoid remote installations because traffic could be intercepted and then 
harm could be caused from that. Then configuration of automation script. This to some extent is good and to some extent is bad. Make sure that um, whatever scripts that you have running automations are monitored all the time. To make sure they are in good state. And we also have um, um, what's in a feature configuration, interface configuration, VLANs. Okay, these are the deeper configuration level, which I don't want to go there with you um, because you might not be doing anything. You are not going to be network engineers. You are going to be security analysts. This is to enhance your understanding in network in general. Please don't misconstrue this. Just get a general understanding of what networking is. And then uh, make sure you choose the best routing protocols and all that switching as well. And uh, securing the management, the security policies are revised. Ensure that you check them to be sure that everything is covered. Threats mitigation. Put it in maybe firewall configuration to avoid threats coming in. You know, turn on. Make sure that at least you can do turn on your firewalls. You know, on and off. And NAT configurations. All these things are things that you have to make sure that um, you you monitor. Network monitoring. Also have things that in place that you can monitor the network. And there are very high quality softwares available you can use to monitor the network, or you can just simply use simple network management tools that will provide it by you for your. For example, look at my uh, tax manager here. Look at the things that I'm running, and I can just monitor my performance here. As you can see this is a monitoring. So if I see that something, like look at this one. So you see, this is telling you what is going on in my network right now. What is consuming the data in my network is that VLAN. I mean that uh, Hyper V that I'm running. So that is the one that consumes most most of my traffic, as you can see over here. And then we also have all the memory consumption. And everything is all over there. You always make sure that you want to have something to monitor your network and be able to detect if there's something consuming a lot of data. Because when I was running those configurations to the attack, if I had shown you this performance, you would be like, yay, look at what's happening. Somebody could have automatically noticed that something is happening in that network. So um, please always make sure that um, you have something like that in place. And make sure that um, signatures are updated Firewall rules are adjusted. Um, have single, multiple um, shared configuration backups somewhere, just in case. And uh, update your licensing because licensing come with protection. So make sure that you have the uh, upgraded uh, operating um, system as well and adjusted whatever you need to do to just secure the enterprise. Please protect it to whatever you can. So this is like a high level overview of an enterprise network. You can see that this is going to the internet. This is for your firewall or your router, and then to the endpoints. Endpoint could be what your your phone. It could be your what your workstation that you're working on. It could be a printer. Or these are the endpoints. Always remember that. So you are you people are actually the front end in security. Please, all these things without educating the user is useless. You can put in the best of security, but if we don't educate your users. That means that you're not in the best of shape. So network attack mitigations, some of the things we can do, as we already said, backup, upgrade, update, patch, do that. Authenticate, authorize, account. You know, authenticate means to verify that, oh, this person have the right to access the system. That's verifying authentication. Authorizing is allowing the person that after verifying that the person have, I mean, permission to log onto the system to allow them in. And accounting is having some kind of log to determine and be sure that you can be sure to see who are connected into the system. And, and if they have to make any changes on the system, you could be able to know. That is also accounting as well. So network attack mitigations all this all about whatever we can do to protect the system as so we have to have firewalls in place um and the type of firewalls we have what packet filtering that's the ip operating on the network level we have application um things that are put on the application level you have url filtering stateful um packet inspection all these are all kinds of um the different kind of firewalls that we have but what does a firewall mean as i explained to you earlier Firewall is nothing more than a gate man at the door, making sure that anybody that's going to come into the house is allowed to come in. And if you want to go out, you're allowed to go out. So somebody like that. But this is a device that has been designed. The technical definition is these allow traffic in and out of the network based on what? A predefined um, set of rules. Like you have to create some rules. And based on those rules, if you look at it and say, oh, this, this person is allowed to come in, this network is, uh, data is allowed to go out, and that order like that. So endpoint security, this is the most important part. Please, the endpoint, like if you say, it's your laptop, your desktop, your tablet, your phone, those are endpoints. Your cameras, your, uh, your uh, what's the name, your printers. So 
common endpoints are laptops and, and things like that. Securing endpoints what, still devices were challenging. It's challenging because um, not everybody has security conscious. You know, so it's important to always have some education program going on every time. Train the employees on basic security um, uh, what's the name? Uh, methods, things that they can do to pre uh, protect themselves and uh, enhance their security. You know, make sure that um, antivirus policies are up to date and signatures are to prevent um, any kind of attack or um, something that's going to cause harm into your network. Um, one of the things that we can look at is to more comprehensive endpoint security solutions rely on network access controls. Yes, that's right. Network access controls are developed, you know, and you know, that's where you, where you list what is supposed to happen, what is supposed to come in, what's supposed to go out. Those are the, what, the access controls. You have to make sure that you put in strict and stringent uh, measures in place to make sure that, um, uh, what's the name, you are protected and overall. So this is the general overview of um, introduction to computing or uh, computer networks. So this is what we have for you for now.